are on what we can all expect. And for them to come out swinging, playing scrappy like they do. They've been playing like that all year. Um, whenever their backs up against the wall, they play. They tend to play better just like we do. So uh, we just got to expect that and understand, you know, there's going to be, it might be dirty plays, maybe cheap shots or whatever coming from another side just because they're fighting for their lives at this point. So we just got to, you know, keep doing what we've been doing. Max, talk to me. What do you think? Is it going to get yeah. dirty tonight? Yeah, it might. I mean, look, if so, this is what happens. As an old Knicks fan who watched the Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley Knicks try to compete with the superior Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen Bulls, when you are at a talent deficit, when the other team is better at basketball than you, you have to turn the game into something that resembles basketball a little bit less. It has You have to change the game into something a little bit less like basketball because they're better at basketball than you. It's the same reason why a superiorly talented team, if, if, you're, if you're the team on the flip side of that, if you have less talent, you want fewer possessions in the game. Because fewer possessions mean a lower score. It means toward the end of the game, it's a closer game, and luck can factor into the outcome to a greater degree. If you hit a couple shots, you can actually have a chance to win against a superior team. Those are the kind of, that's the kind of strategy the Celtics have to pursue because the Cavs are simply better than them because they have LeBron James and a team well-constructed around them and because they're rested, because since they're better, they went right through their playoff rounds and, and the Celtics struggled more. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty good prediction out of J.R. Uh, Smith that, that the Celtics will try to turn this thing into something that resembles basketball a little bit less. Well, first of all, I'm very, very fond of J.R. Smith. Uh, I go back to his days. I, I loved him in Denver. Uh, I loved it when he came to the New York Knicks. Uh, but this is a guy that got himself suspended for a game because of his hit on Crowder a couple of years ago and, and, and nearly caused some things. So we have to get take the instigating element into consideration when it comes to J.R. Smith, too. Let's make sure we understand that he is not a saint. Having said all of that, nothing was more egregious than when Kelly Olenek, you know, separated the shoulder of Kevin Love. I thought that was a straight MMA move. Um, I've said that on many, yep. many occasions. I don't deviate from that. So when we ask the question, do you expect the Celtics to play dirty? I say no. Do I, can I see that happening with Kelly Olenek specifically? Yes, he's a rough, rugged dude. He gets physical. He won't hesitate to get physical. It's who he is. And, you know, other than a set shot that had him looking like the second coming of Larry Bird in game seven against the Wizards the other night, you know, Kelly Olynyk is a guy that makes his living on grit and being grimy and going after it. So it's entirely possible and plausible that he will do it. The Celtics themselves collectively, I don't see that in Avery Bradley. I don't see that in Isaiah Thomas. I don't see that in Al Horford. I don't see that in Crowder. I don't see that in this kid that I like a lot, in Jalen Brown. I don't see that in the rest of these guys. But in Kelly Olynyk, Marcus Smart. I don't put anything. Uh, you know, well, Marcus Smart is different because I don't consider him to be dirty. But he's rough and rugged. Right. He's going to come after you. He's, so he's is rugged. Avery Bradley. Agreed. They're going to be physical. They're not going to back down. They're going to go tit for tat. But if you don't do anything dirty to them, they won't do anything dirty to you. I don't find them to be instigators. I find Kelly Olynyk not in the worst way, but I don't find Kelly Olynyk to be innocent in that regard. I, I find him to be right. a potential instigator because that's how he makes his money. He's the only they don't have a yep. shot blocker. So they have to they have to impose their physical will on you and he's one guy big enough, strong enough and comfortable enough with the ruggedness to do it. Yes, he also hides behind the like, "Oh, I'm a little bit clumsy and a little over eager and come on, man. <laughs> no, no one's buying that. We see what's going on. Uh, here's the problem, Stephen A. What's the key to the Celtics trying to compete in this series? The key is stopping LeBron James's dribble. I brought up the fact that Baron Davis in for Charles Barkley the other night made a very good point concerning that. Got to stop that because he gets to the paint and everything else opens up. And he how are you going to do that? He's a basketball genius and a great, how, how and you, a great passer, etc. Well, that's the point. How you I do mean, that? part of that is you're going to have you're going to have to get a little more physical. And I think that's partly what J.R. Smith is anticipating. You're going what you to, have within the rules of basketball, particularly the way the game is called now and the way the rules are now, 
you're going to have to walk right up to the line. You're going to have to really push it in terms of what you can get away with to try to stop LeBron, to try to get him to pick up that dribble. Here's what you yep. do with LeBron. Here's what you do with LeBron. First of all, it's nothing that's going to work, but I'm just giving you a strategy. In terms of sure. specifically, specifically pertaining to limiting his dribble, anytime he has the ball before he gets past half court, you, 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 put man, you put man on ball pressure on him from the moment he touches the ball because Ty Lue is not going to want him dribbling the ball up the court if he has to be like a point guard and resistance, you know, and have resistance dribbling the ball up the basketball court. He'll give it to somebody else and then he'll move someplace without the ball to get the ball back. That's what you want to do. You want to make, uh, to me, if I'm them, I let LeBron, I meaning if I'm Boston, I want LeBron dribbling the ball up the court. I want him doing that because I want as much responsibility on his shoulders as possible, because to me, Careful. you're hoping, even though it's conditioned to the sublime, you're hoping that too much responsibility might distract him from just completely destroying you. I disagree with that strategy, Stephen A., because he gets ahead of steam going. Like, people forget, or maybe they don't, LeBron James is the size of Carl Malone in his prime. Like, I brought up Patrick Ewing. He outweighs Patrick Ewing when Ewing was a young player. He's a huge guy, and he's also end-to-end -end of the court, like, who, as fast as John Wall or someone like that. And, 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 and he's got handles, and he can finish at the rim, obviously, so, and he has a genius basketball IQ, and he's the best passer in the game, maybe. Court vision, all anticipation, all those things. So when he gets mm -hmm. ahead of steam going and can get toward the paint, even, everything opens up for them. And in fact, I think LeBron's noted, you know, awareness of that, the fact that sometimes the team functions best when he's on ball and Kyrie's off ball is one of the reasons Kyrie's not always no, I'm perceived not, I'm not, on I'm the level I'm not talking about Westbrook him setting up the Steph. offense. I'm not talking about him literally setting up the offense. I'm talking about when you take the ball out of bounds and you give him the ball and he's dribbling up the court, have somebody in his face. Outside of that, Max, lay off him. You know what? Eat the J. Eat the J because he does more damage when of he gets to the to, hole. Yep. He draws fouls, and plus he demoralizes you because of his ability to play above the rim. If, if, if you got to give him the jumper, that's the, that, you got to take that but chance. When you get, you got to take that chance. I agree, but when you even say something like, like man pressure, like on the ball, as soon as he crosses half court, what you're saying is you're bringing defenders physically, in terms of proximity, closer to LeBron. And with the mindset that the Celtics have to have to stop him and the chippiness they have to feel to defend home court after being humiliated for the second consecutive time on their home court, because at the end of the regular yeah. season, the same thing happened. I that expect was... a chippier, more physical game from the Celtics, and yeah. it, it could turn into something. I agree with JR's analysis. No, I, I wasn't talking about after he came to his half court. I'm saying that from the time you take the ball out 94 feet, if he has the ball in his hands, have somebody in his face while he's there. Make him give up the ball and then work to full deny him the pressure. basketball. And that's right, full court press it to work to deny him the ball after he gives the ball up. And then once he gets it, lay off of him on the jump shot because you don't want him to get to the hole because he'll demoralize you. It's playoff basketball. If, if LeBron's taking chippy. jump shots, you're doing good. All right, gentlemen, game two, 8.30 tonight from Boston. But when we come back, the Braves took matters into their own hands yesterday with Jose Bautista after he pimped a home run the day before. Did they retaliate the right way? Plus, could two sweeps in the conference finals cause major damage to the NBA? We'll tell you why after the break.